and I'm actually going to put the original values right here as well. So this was the observed values and this right here is the expected value. So we're comparing these numbers in the cells. As you can see, they're quite different. So what we're looking for here is if there's actually a difference between gender and exercise or if there's a correlation between gender and exercise. How do we do this? Well, we need to click on the button called matrix first of all, because we're going to be creating a table just like this. And these are called matrices or matrix in, uh, in math. So click on second, then this right here where it says matrix, uh, go to edit and click on a, so a right here, the first one. And if you enter it into uh, this value, you'll have to select uh, a matrix that is two by two. So just uh, put two by two right here and enter all of these values just like I did on the bottom. So this is 110, this is 98, 106 and 86. And this will basically save your matrix table as A. So essentially it will sa save these values as a matrix A. So basically one more time, this is second um, X to the power of minus one or also known as matrix written in blue right here. And then go to edit and edit your uh, matrix A. Now, once you've done this, go to stat again. We press and uh, we'll click on a stat button right here. Now, instead of going to calc, we're going to go to something called tests. And on the bottom, as you keep going down, I believe it's actually a little bit. Yeah, here we go. It's actually called C. Uh, this is a chi square test. It's, it has the squiggly X with a square. Click on it and observed value a now if you have expected value you would put it here but we don't actually have one we only have the observed value and it's called a so just click on enter enter and calculate and what you get is a table just like this there's chi square value given to us there's something called a p value and there's something called df or degrees of freedom so let's actually analyze all of these three numbers starting with uh chi square so chi square here is given to us as 0.217 and let's write this right here. So chi square is going to be in this ta uh, in this uh, table cell right here, and it's 0.217. So what does this mean? Well, it's a very very low chi square, and if we have a small or low chi square, our um, our null hypothesis might be true. So values must be independent. In other words, what this means is there must be no relationship between gender and regular exercise. So it doesn't matter what if you're male or female for regular exercise because um, the values are independent. So, okay, how do we actually find this? How do we figure out that this is uh, a low enough value for chi-square? Well, we're going to be looking at a table that's actually given to us in the book. Uh, and this is a table called called chi-square significance table. And this is from page, I believe it's on page 338 in your book. So it basically gives you these various values. Um, now, we are going to be discussing each of these values right now before continuing this because you need to understand them. So um, right here, these numbers are chi-squares. Uh, and for this particular table that we have, we need to know something called degrees of freedom, which is basically right here, this column right here. So what is the degrees of freedom? Well, here, let me just try to explain it to you this way. If I draw a table and I know the total sum of numbers at the end of the table, so I just say the sum right here is uh, four, the sum right here is five, six, and, and sum on the bottom is eight, 10, and 11. So essentially you get this table with three by three cells. Now this is total nine cells. Now what is the degrees of freedom in this case? And what are these de degrees of freedom? So let's just say I place number one right here. Now it's number, uh, so this is one. Uh, the total sum of all of these numbers in the cell has to be four and total numbers here has to be 11. Let's just say I place number two here now. This is number two. Now this together gives me three. Uh, in other words, that this, this number here has to be one. In other words, this is the limit of my degrees of freedom. I only have two possible choices with the last number. It must be one. This has to be one because the total sum is four. This total sum is four. And just like that, uh, in, in this table, we are given a sum in a, and so we can only have one possible number we can choose. There's only one degree of freedom. Only one of these numbers can be chosen. And it's this number here or possibly this number here if we start here. Um, now, what about the other column? So 
in a similar fashion, I can choose one more number. I can maybe choose like a, say a two here, but that means that this number is already selected for us. So if this is one plus one is three, uh, and some of these numbers gives us 11, so this must be eight. So there is also two degrees of freedom this way. So two degrees of freedom horizontally, two degrees of freedom vertically. And this can still be chosen as well. So this number can also be chosen. And uh, we can actually say that maybe this is like a two as well. Uh, but every other number in, in this particular table has to be selected uh, from the numbers that are already taken. So two plus two plus something gives us 10. So this must be six. Two plus two plus something gives us five. So this must be, must be one. And finally, eight plus six. Okay, that doesn't work, so I'll just say this is going to be 16. Uh, 8 plus 6, 14, so this must be 2. Uh, okay, this doesn't actually do really, really well, but uh, that's because I, I came up with these randomly. But the idea here is that this part in the middle defines our df, our degrees of freedom. And how many degrees of freedom does this 9 by 9 table have? Well, it has uh, 1, 2, three and four. So this table has four degrees of freedom. So if we were to use this table in this graph that I've just given you, we would have to look at this value. This is four degrees of freedom. But for the smaller table that we used before with uh, exercise and male and female, here we have only one degree of freedom because there's actually only four cells. We're only looking at these cells because there's only four cells. Once you select this number, this is already pre-selected and so is this because the sum has to be 208 and here the sum has to be 216. So this only has one degree of freedom or we're actually only looking at this part. We're only looking at this particular uh, part of this table. Uh, so that's degrees of freedom. Now there's also something called significance level. What is significance level? And that's basically the value you see on top right here. So significance level of 10%, 5%, and 1%. Now, this is basically what we would refer to as accuracy. And in statistics, it's usually known as alpha level. Alpha of 10%, which is basically the least accurate. 5%, which is uh, the most commonly used or medium accuracy. And there's also 1%. Sometimes you will see 2%, but these are the most common ones. So this the 1% is basically the most accurate. It's basically when you say, okay, I want to have just only 1% error. Uh, and this is actually just means, you know, it's, this is error, error or accuracy. Uh, and then you have 10%, which is basically when you like the least accurate. And finally, the middle would be 5% where it's sort of like in the middle and this, it's usually the, the one that's most commonly used. So let's actually rephrase all this. I'm going to erase all this and rephrase all this. And we're going to need to try to do a completely different example using everything we've learned so far in our calculator to try to maybe solve a simple problem.